listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. All right. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. It's a wonderful day uh, to still be alive and believe. You know, we have a lot of understanding to come to nowadays in order to try to divest ourselves, our minds, um, from a lot of things that have been programmed into us. You understand? Because, you know, when, when things are put into you a certain way, you function a certain way. And you cannot help it. None of us can. And, that's, and, and, you know, it takes knowledge. It does. You know, for instance, the word faith. The word faith really means belief. So if you start substituting the word belief, put that in place. Instead of when you read the word faith, you'll have a more concrete understanding. Because faith, the way we've all been hardwired, is just mental sin. Did y'all get it? But when you say believe, are you following me? See, belief without works. You hear that? If you say faith without works, look how much it's been watered down. You notice the strength has been taken away from it? Just by one word. And, and all you have to do is go look behind the word that they say, faith, and you'll see that it means belief. So you're not changing, adding to a, you know, it's amazing. Christianity is just made, they put a lot of fear on us, that. Uh, had a lot of fear. Abba Yah, we thank you for all things. Your magnificent, wonderful name we esteem in this diaspora. We thank you for allowing us a right ruling, right mind, right conscience, and right spirit to be able to understand your truth and that your laws resonate within our hearts. Continue to draw us near as we hasten to that day. Speak to us your words of truth. We will live for you that sinners may be converted. We magnify the magnificent name of Jesus. We thank you for the blood that was shed and always mindful that if it wasn't for him, our names would not be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. So that we are forever grateful for. We thank you, our King, our Yah, our Elohim. Bless us this Shabbat morning with your words, your truth, that we continue to stay sanctified and set apart in the midst of a wicked and perverse generation to bring forth fruit. In the mighty name of Yahshua, amen. You may be seated, Israel. All right, now I'm going to sit there and I'll wrestle with this thing all Sabbath now. All right. Everybody doing all right? Yeah. Now you notice, <laughs> it is turned cold extremely fast. I told you, it's like, bam! <laughs> I mean, God's was just not too long ago and it was hot. And here we are no more than a few weeks removed and we're... Man, it's time to break out the sweatshirts. Next thing you know, we be full winter coats. And it, we, we may get two feet of snow at Tabernacles. So you people that plan on coming to Tabernacles, you better, you better bring some warm clothing. Because we're sleeping in, in the tents. I want to hear your bawling and squalling and whining and crying. Unless you're Mother Beasley and Mother Stallings, I don't want to hear it. Look at them looking at me. Glory to the king. You know, I, find, I know y'all find it hard to believe uh, that um, when I was playing military, playing army, uh, the unit I was in, we didn't take any tents to us to the field. We was out there three, four weeks at a pot. Y'all heard, I know it's hard to believe. You know what the tent was? And a tree. Or bush. You know what I mean? We're training. We don't want to get caught by the bad guys. Though, so the la you know, one of the last places we thought they would look is, is in a big old set of bushes. 
you go hide in the bushes. Now, believe it or not, the bushes are scarier than what they look. Usually, there's not too much going on in the bushes. You would think that all kind of creatures and critters and everything else, wouldn't you? Hmm? That's not so. I know I'm still here. But those mosquitoes, they don't care where you are, who you are. They will seek and search and find you out. And they got some big ones in Canada. They mosquitoes look like, they, they like dragonflies. <laughs> I kid you not, man. One day we was over at Brother Stephen's sister went to the place and, and they had a screen door up, right? And I went over and stood by the screen door. And you could see those mosquitoes whew, trying to get in just to bite me. I mean, they came up, whoo, quick. That for some reason they can smell whatever it is, whatever it, I don't know what it is, but I need the opposite. I tried garlic until I couldn't take it no more. It still didn't work. All I did was come up with bad breath. <laughs> you understand? Hallelujah. Let me submit a thought to our minds here this Shabbat morning. We greet each and every last one of you out there by way of video who are watching us on the live stream. We hope that you encourage. And that you uh, do not take the message personally, even though you need to take it personally. Is that good? We hope that there's no offense or found in you, because if I say something that offends you, it's not me that you need to check out at you. Does that make any sense? I don't know. You know, false knowledge and false wisdom insulates us and protect us from the truth and growth. Y'all getting this? Now... We understand according to our laws, the laws that have been given to us, handed down by Moshe, or the custodian of the law, are coming through the Navins or the prophets. And if I say things, I'm going to believe me, I'm going to try to always speak words easy to understand. And I know that we have a lot of new people listening to us um, because my uh, statistics, is that what it is, statistics? They, they tell me so, which is, we're glad to have you. Um, but get ready for a change, get ready for war. Uh, and get ready to make a lot of enemies if you choose to, to walk in this truth and embrace the kingdom. Is that right? Set yourself and get your heart ready and prepare it for battle. Now, let's look at something according to the commandments, especially centered on the fourth commandment, the Shabbat, here just for a second, all right? When we think about the Shabbat, all right, we, we know um, that, that we have six days that we are to labor, and we're to do all our work. Is that right? All, is that right? And we know uh, that according to uh, our commandments, that the sixth day was a day also of double portion. Is that right? It was a day of double portion, meaning that we couldn't go out on the seventh day and expect to receive the same manna that would fall from Shemaim as it did previously. That we had to gather up a double rate that day. All right? Also, it's a day of preparation, meaning we have to do, um, if we prepare right, we have, to, well, we have to prepare a little bit more on that day than we do previous days in order to get ready for the Shabbat. So that we can rest, have our mind and our conscience clear, clear-minded, so we can be in tune with the Father. Is that right? Be in tune with the Father and, and grow in grace and in knowledge. You know, people might think, why in the world we keep doing this thing week after week after week after week? Because it's a reminder. Because if we do not remind ourselves, if we do not do this thing right here, it won't be too long that it'll slip. And then if you slip, soon you will fall. Are you following me? So you think about where we at in time. Y'all was timing right now. Uh, definitely we are in the sixth day. And being in the sixth day, um, our labors should be double. Because we're getting ready to go off into the kingdom, right? Isn't that right? That means no matter whatever we're doing on this earth, our passions, our labors, our intent, whatever we are ascribing for as far as the kingdom and stuff, you know, because whatever we find ourselves to be, when this thing is over with, that's the way we're set throughout all of eternity. Are you following me? So my advice to you is to make sure you get a double labor in while you're here on the sixth day and don't let the flesh keep you from a, a, a nice place of position and notoriety in the kingdom. You understand? 
you run so that you finish the race. Are right, you following me? And the way you do that is, is making sure that you are trying to obtain unto holiness. Because without it, which no man is going to see Yahweh. And that's what's not preached much today is holiness. Matter of fact, it's one of the most ignored subjects that it is because holiness means you have to be obedient. Not only obedience, but you have to be set apart. You have to be, you, your, your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, uh, what you personally pick and choose and cherry pick and all that. When you understand holiness, it's not predicated upon what you choose to accept or deny. It's who you are as a person. And since we have been through so many captivities, meaning slaveries, and we have lost the knowledge of ourselves, that's why we find ourselves acting like a bunch of banshees and hyenas and cheetahs and everything else, but a wild beast of the field. Are right, you following? Because we have lost the knowledge of self. And of course, this is all by design. You have to understand the Hasatan controls the nations. And him controlling the nations, he has influenced the governments, the kingdoms of this world, and especially the religions of this world. His job is to make sure he confuses the matter and stuff to keep you from knowing who you are. Because once you discover who you are, everything changes. Everything changes. You see, when you're in Christianity, you say, oh, okay, good, I'm a Christian, all that stuff. It didn't bring too much power. But when you found out you're a child of the king and that you belong to a family, all of a sudden everything changed. Everything really changed. And that you have an inheritance coming. There's a respect that comes along with this walk right here. Now, this your family and them didn't get it do because they didn't inform you because they were influenced by the same powers that be that we all have bitten other fruit of lies of. Uh, but we're not going to cry with spilt milk. We're just going to come to the knowledge of the truth. Is that right? Yes, Don't worry about it. It's not going to be many of us to make it to the kingdom. Right. Remember Matthew 25. I went over yesterday during the, the uh, broadcast again. When the Son of Man comes in all of his glory and his holy angels with him. Huh? The, what was the first thing he's going to do? He's going to separate the sheep from the goats. How is he going to do that? He's going to divide the people by their nation. Are you following me? You understand? He's going to divide the people by their nation. And, and the sheep are automatically the saints of the Most High Yah. The goats are everybody else in the whole entire world. You see, every nation has a religion whether they believe it or not. Even if they don't promote it, it's still a religion that permeates in their life. In that nation, for instance, America, since we are here, is Christianity. Christianity is a creation of Rome. You will not find any laws, statutes, or commandments written about in that holy Bible from one end to the next, from Genesis to Revelation, that would give you instruction in how to obey the religion of Christianity. Now, if you go into the commentaries, if you go into the writings of the popes, all right, follow me, and, and all these other people who claim Protestantism, and, which is nothing but a rebellious child from the Catholic Church. All you Protestants who think you protesting, you're not protesting too good when you're obeying their laws. I don't obey their law. I'm not a Catholic. Do you keep Sunday? You're a good Catholic. Do you keep Easter? You're a good Catholic. Do you, yeah, you do. Yes, you do. Do you keep all this stuff? Christmas, you are a very good Catholic. It makes no difference what you mentally say, you know, in your mind and what comes out of your mouth. It's about function and what you do. Y'all understand? So people are truly deceived. And they, now, don't worry about messianics. You ain't too good either. You follow Judaism. And Judaism is a religion that was created by the Khazarians. And it went back a long, long time ago. But there's a lot of things that, that seem to have Hebraic roots to them. But there's nothing Hebraic with it at, about it at all. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Saul's instruction to a young man was, is you be careful of Jewish fables. Y'all hear that? And there's a lot of things that you think that is Hebrew that has nothing to do with Hebrew whatsoever at all. You've been had to. Well, yeah. Pastor Dow, you mean to tell me that we all are deceived? No, you are. Right. I'm not in that. You are, you're not in that. Do you understand? But that's the reason why we have to study. He's not going to save nobody but Israel still. 
It's not going to save you being whoever you think you may want to be or whoever you think you are. You're going to have, no matter what nation you come from, if you're converted, you have to be an Israelite. When the gospel said, and Jesus, he come to save his people, that means family, from their sins. He doesn't give uh, Gentiles a right to stay who they are. That's what repent and be converted is all about. That means repent, forsake your gods, your theologies, your ideologies. Yeah, amen. All of that. And then start walking in the way of the laws and statutes and commandments, obedience to the Father. And being converted is you leave your former customs, yes. traditions. Yeah. Did I say something wrong? No. And then you'll really truly show who you are. Yes. And don't be deceived by Christianity. Not by the eye where they're down in. That's their hallmark line there. You understand it, right? It won't be long before you date and everybody say, yeah, yeah, okay, we're in for about that. It won't be long before you date. Hallelujah. Israel. But we're going to learn something here, all right? We're going to do a little bit of reading here this morning, all right? Prophecy. We're going to show you something here, all right? The land of Yisrael. Now, you know we're getting ready to go off into the feast, is that right? Huh? Because this is a joyous time for us. Joyous time for us. Right now, you know, the Gentiles, they're in that dead season. But they're getting ready to come alive as soon as the Feast of Tabernacles over with. They're going to come alive. Right on the hills of that is their Halloween. They're going to be dressing up like ghost jokers, goose and goblins and everything else and trick-or-treating and smelling feet and everything else. They're going to they get busy. They're going to get busy. They're going to be, get busy being a bunch of pack of hyenas. And then they're going to celebrate a, a, a lie, a make-believe guy that they got the whole world believing. They pulled off something, ain't they? They have really poured it off when you come to look at it. Hallelujah. The land of Israel. Let's look at the prophecy here for a second, all right? Over in Bethesda Sheet 15, 18, it says, And the same day Yahweh made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed. Now, Abram is one man, right? Unto thy seed. Have I given this land? You know? Right? Now, look, look at geographical locations. Are right, you following me? Geographical location. All right? From the river of Egypt. That means the Nile. The Nile is the great river in Mizraim. Unto the great river, the river of Euphrates. That is a gigantic landmass. All right? Let's go to another uh, scripture over here to see what the Torah has to say. Every place where upon the soles our feet shall tread shall be yours from the wilderness of Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall you, your coast be. That's a big coastline. That's an extraordinary coast. That coastline is bigger than New Jersey. Now, today, modern day Kazaria. And, and don't think that I'm misspeaking. I'm telling the truth. You're just not familiar with it. All right, modern day Kazaria that is commonly called Israel right here. This is about the size of New Jersey. Right there. That's what they say the powers that be who tries to influence our mind is the land that is promised to Israel. So now you have the Palestinians and the Khazarians or the Ashkenazis blowing the hell out of each other. Or let's just say the Ashkenazis are blowing the hell out of the Palestinians. You can't use their 15s. Uh, uh, you can use F-15s, but there's no way you're going to throw rocks at an F-15 and win that battle in war. So it's definitely disproportionate, if you understand what I mean. And most of you don't know the history um, that there was this king by the name of King Bogan that came up here, over here, well, or kind of like over here in this region. Right, let me go right, like right here. It's not on here, but it's, he, ca he came from this, this region right here. And, and he, he converted to what is called Judaism. That, those are the people who the Messiah, the Mashiach, was fighting against when you see all these wars taking place. Because they had, just like Christianity today, they had total rule over the people's minds. 
They were fully entrenched, like Christianity today. Right? The mega churches got you people mesmerized. They think you got you thinking that's what Christianity is. And these, this known religion of that day had so much influence on the people that even in the writings it says this. It says that people were terrified to profess Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, because they had feared social status of being put out of the temple. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that, that, that they had so much power and influence that you feared at that time of being removed from the synagogue? So every time the Messiah went into the synagogue, you would think that they would have a good old revival, a, a wonderful time, wouldn't you? Every time he goes in the synagogue, a fight arose. Why? Because he would cast out devils. He would tell them what the law and Moses said. And they couldn't dispute with him. And, of course, you know, Jesus was kind of a little unorthodox. He didn't kind of do it the way that people do it in that day. So you know what he did, right? He said, I'll just make the wilderness my temple. And he'd go out into the wilderness, and can you imagine 5,000 people? He good shepherd, too. Not only did they sit out there one day, they were out there a few days. Listen to him. And he was so sensitive towards their needs that he would feed them. Mind you, he didn't go out there with a Walmart truck to get all the logistics in order. He actually took the provisions that the people had, which wasn't too much. He gave it to his disciples and said, now go feed the people. Can you imagine what you're thinking? But since you already know who he was, you know, you didn't say nothing because you kept it inside. But even at that, he knew what you were thinking. Because you would read again in the writings how, how that he knew the thoughts of all men. Huh? And they, they couldn't believe that you could turn around and take a basket of, <laughs> of loaves and some fishes and, pass, and feed 5,000 people. And then he was so meticulous. He did not believe in the spirit of being wasteful. His instruction was, even after all his preaching and teaching, gather up the fragments. Why? So we can eat it another day. Unlike America, throw it away. Mm -mm -mm. Total different attitude, isn't it? Total different attitude, isn't it? Now, y'all remember, when we went into Mizraim, we went in a freed people. We were already free. You understand? So we look back and look at the history of that to understand but how we ended up in the captivity. But if you want to understand how to behave and how you should conduct and carry yourself in captivity, you need to pay more attention to the book of Daniel, which also is a book that you can go and put a slash mark and adjacent to and all that good stuff to the book of Revelations. And it will teach you how to behave. Because from Daniel, that book was written coming from captivity. Meaning we were in it. You understand? So you need to understand your mindset and know who you are. So that, and then you listen to the words of Jesus when the Romans was entrenched and stuff. So you don't get turned over to the sheriff and the sheriff turn you, the judge turn you over to the sheriff. The sheriff turn you over to the guy going to lock you up in all your righteous, full, religious indignation. This world don't care nothing about your truth and what you embrace. You need to know when it's time to fight and when it's time to shut up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. So we have a lot that we need to come to, Israel. So here we are. So this is the land right now that the whole world, uh, the powers that be today, was just having to be Rome. Uh, you said, well, Rome is ancient. No, it ain't. Rome is revived. Rome has been here for quite some time. But this, this is the land, mass that they say that, that, that um, Yahweh, gave his people Israel. Just this little piece of land, no big as New Jersey. But we just got finished reading the scripture that says, now look, here is the great river in Mizraim, which is called the Nile. See, this is the Nile. All right? And then up here is the river Euphrates. So here's the landmass of Israel. Y'all see that? That's the land. 
that he gave to Abraham and his seed. Now y'all getting it? Now I'm going to say something that's going to pee a lot of people off, all right? All right? But you need to understand where I come from. I'm not, even though I make mention at time of, of these, these Ashkenazi Khazarian um, so-called, well, they are Jews, making war with the Palestinians, that's really none of my business. I hope they blow the hell out of each other because they're not our people. I'm sorry, I don't feel bad for you Arabs at all. You deserve exactly what you get for selling us into slavery. I know people like, oh boy, that passed the doubt. Here he go again now. Everybody, you ain't getting, nobody getting away with nothing. He's using the same people who whooped our butt, now they're whooping yours. Uh-oh. I only care about y'all's people. Now, if you are a Palestinian and, and now you are a real, true Israelite, not like these Israelis over here, you can be my brother. Well, other than that, y'all people are other nations beating up on each other, and that's none of my business. Does that make any sense? So before y'all get all sacrilegious on me and, and go crazy and stuff, just understand where I'm coming from. Did I say it was just and right? No, didn't. None of my business, and stuff, but I'm interested in my people. Hallelujah. I don't care nothing about the whole world. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, y'all getting this? It's good that we use these visuals so we can understand. So remember, the, the Nile River, or the Great River, that was in Mizraim, that was promised to Abraham, here, and then the great river Euphrates, here. So all this was promised to Abraham and his seed. That's a little bit bigger than this, isn't it? Hallelujah. Now, here we are, Israel again. You know, the blue is, is actually what they really own, modern-day Israel, all right? This is the time, this is what they owned in 1947 that is outlined in the blue. See, what happened is, is that Great Britain and the United States, they're putting the UN. Uh, it's really the League of Nations. All right? What they did was they, here it is, UN General Assembly votes to partition British mandate. Now, I wonder if they consulted with the Palestinians if that was all right to do. I guarantee you the Palestinians didn't even have a seat at the table. Excuse me for a second. This thing is. Pastor Dow, we know this. We done been over this before. We going over it again. Because you forget everything. Yeah, you do. All right. Um, the Palestinian into, uh, by British mandate, the Palestine, Palestine into a Jewish Arab sector soon after adoption of the resolution on no, 29th of November 1947, fighting breaks out and civil war spreads. Why? Because you're getting, you're getting ready to move a bunch of people in this land that don't belong there, and of course they're taking it over by conquest. What they're doing is they're trying to tell you that it was a real estate transaction, but you know how deceitful a certain people are. Are you following me? And so these people are fighting. So by the time we get to 48, 49, look how much they have grown. Just within one year. All right? By the time we get to 1967, what is called that wicked-ass six-day war that they try to associate with Bible prophecy. Right. They do this with you dumb people who don't know nothing. Right. All right? Israel, in a preemptive strike against Arab states capturing Gaza and Sinai Peninsula from Egypt and the West Bank from Georgia and the Golden Heights in Syria and the Arab Eastern Jerusalem. So now look how much they own. You see that? Now look at this. You notice that the West Bank is really shrinking now as far as who's in control. Here we are, 2005 up to this present day, Israeli withdrawals unilaterally from Gaza as part of the West Bank, but further withdrawals from Arab land tied to the implication of an Annapolis peace plan provided for the two-state solution. Now the bottom line is that neither one of them want each other in that land. But the reason why Israel, and the only reason why Israel is ruling and dominating and oppressing this people that's in this land is because they are backed by the United States of America and their power and their wealth and their military might. Israel, just for being in that land, gets over $11 billion a year. 
and I'm probably on the conservative side, from the United States of America, and they're armed by the United States of America to oppress the indigenous people of this land. That's the stuff you're not going to see on CNN, TBN, CBN, Christian Broadcasting Network, or APAC. But that's the truth. Today, that's why I want to get to this, you can see how much they have actually gathered and yet because they haven't come to an, an agreement with the United Nations is that this is how much the Green Party is how much that the Palestinians are left controlling. The red is all the places that they have actually done took over even more so. And all that is based on, on the backing of Britain and the United States. This is an actual truthful border line, and I think it actually goes down a little bit farther, truthful border line of actually the land that Yahweh promised to Abraham and his seeds. The deception is, is that they have the whole world believing that it's just this little piece right here that's about the size of New Jersey. Are you following? I don't know, I guess, I don't, but if I was the Palestinians, I, I tell, man, I'd try to get me some allies and I'd just take up all this area right here and then come back in power, Mike. Right. People have been warned ever since the beginning of the time. Yeah. All right? Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 30, verse 2, Thus speaketh Yahweh Elohim of Israel, saying, Write these, write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. You hear that? The Messiah, I mean, the king of the universe told his prophet, I want you to write this down in a book. Why? Because when he's gone, his words will still be left behind. For lo, the days come and say of Yahweh that I will bring again. He will bring what? He's going to bring what? Again, again, again. The captivity of my people, Christianity. Israel. Roman Catholicism. Israel. The Baptist, the Methodist, the Apostolic, the Pentecostals. The Ethan Orthodox, the Episcopalian, the Greek Orthodox. Israel. Pastor Dow, can't you read? No. I can comprehend. I messed some of y'all up on that one, didn't I? That's why I take it slow. He's, the Yahweh said again, he's going to bring the captivity of my people Israel and Judah Saith Yahweh, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. The problem is, is how we get there. Most people think that we're going to go up to Russia, and we're going to buy a bunch of plane tickets to the rest of the Ashkenazi and the Khazarians that are scattered up there and bring them in the land of Israel, and we call that Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Most of you are totally oblivious to what I'm saying, and don't even have a clue. But I guarantee you could tell me all the strategic points to a Twitch bar. Uh-oh. No, we're paying attention to the things we shouldn't be paying attention to. Is that right? I am having a time again. Let me try to do something here. This thing just don't, maybe if I try to turn it upside down. What do you think? Yeah, bro, bro, there, I said, there you go. But I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. No, today we have a religious influence that's trying to make Bible prophecy take place because they do something and they find a scripture and they say, this is what it is. All right? And these are the words that God will speak concerning Israel and concerning Judah. Ezekiel said in 28.5, Thus saith Yahweh your Elohim, when I shall have gathered the house of Israel, when I shall have gathered. That's why the Bible fits perfectly. The prophets, uh, the apostles, they all agree. You need to understand this. The only way we're getting back in that land is when the Father miraculously puts us there. You're not going to buy no plane ticket. Or get over on a boat and say that Yahweh will put you there. No, he didn't. He's going to put us there all at once. This is what the prophets are talking about. Are y'all listening to Israel? 
and y'all will know them that are here. See, he's going to have to do this just so he can keep the goats out. Y'all hearing it? Thus say, Yahweh, your Elohim, when I have, shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among uh, whom they are scattered. And we're scattered where? All over the whole earth. Huh? And while we're doing this scattering, what are we supposed to do? Preach and minister to the nations. And shall be sanctified in them and in the sight of the heathen. How are we going to be what? Sanctify them in the sight of the heathen. That means we're going to be set apart for our own selves and the sight of the heathen going to know us. Now the heathen are going to constantly, continually keep dispar speaking disparaging comments towards us. They're going to constantly insult us because we're not like them. Are you following me? They, they, they're going to, they know that we don't do like they do. Are you following me? And that's how we're going to be sanctified. Hmm? Also, we're going to be tried in the fire of affliction. Just like silver. We ain't getting past it. Are you following me? That's why it says the trying of your belief. I know it says faith, but the trying of your belief. Huh? Because when you believe like everybody else believes, you ain't tried. When you, when you, you believe, when you say, well, I, my, I, I have faith, they believe you have faith in the same God that they serve. But your belief is what separates you because your belief is where your footprint is. Your belief shows who you are and what you believe by what you do and not by what you say. And the heathen that are round about you will know that you are set apart. Now to them, they'll call you a fanatic, a crackpot, a kook, you're crazy, you're out of touch, and all the cult and everything else. Huh? But they know that you're different. All right? And they shall dwell there in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob. Now again, here is the majority of what you see the news talking about today. But yet, here is the land that Yahweh promised Abraham and his seed. Y'all see what they do when they play on our ignorance? See, what they do is they give you information and they tell you what it is. That's like a lot of these people that are involved in archaeological, how do you pronounce that word? Archaeology. What they do is they'll find a bone tell you what it is and how old it is and you get all mesmerized and pay money to go see it. Yeah. And because they've been telling that lie for so long, you fall in the same old cattleman cattle like everybody else. You believe it. That's what they do. Nobody questions it. Why? Because we're not experts. That's what they say. So when the king come and he bring down his king, his, 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 uh, the whole, all of Shemaim and stuff, we're going to be ruling from his whole entire region. Y'all hear me? These are the people that I started trying to get to you earlier. These are the people right here that are actually, um, that are in that land right now. Now, the prophecies say that his people are scattered all over the what? The earth. The only reason why these people are not in this land now is because every place they've been, the countries found out who, what kind of people they were, and they kicked them out. The Russians kicked them out. Germany had enough and wanted to get rid of them. They're very unscrupulous people. They're very, they, 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 have, they have got a, a spirit in them that is just... It's Satan. Modern day Israel is Satan's kingdom. Let's go ahead and tell it like it is. And, and, and his bitch is, is Roman Catholic Church. Go ahead and make it plain. I've never been accused as a man of um, a few words. <laughs> But we're just going to tell it like it is. We understand that language because most of us come from the streets anyway. Hallelujah. So every once in a while we have to revisit who we were. A base people to get some understanding. Hallelujah. All right. Uh-oh.
Look at them looking. 